So uh, today I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the year I spent uh, doing some open source. So I was fortunate enough to spend a year and a half doing uh, open source development for a major uh, internet hosting provider. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, those are the gems that I worked on. So. <laughs> So when I first started off, um, I did a little bit of analysis. I kind of dug into the gems and I looked to see uh, what was missing, where there were some rough spots in the code that needed to be refactored, uh, where um, uh, there were some, uh, some issues uh, some, or some PRs that needed to be addressed, and uh, basically just some uh, holes in the, um, uh, in the test coverage. And uh, I basically came out with this huge list of uh, to-dos that I wanted to do. Um, and then basically, I was, uh, I was off in coding. Um, and when I got uh, an issue, I basically just dropped everything, and I worked on it. Um, and then in a, uh, about a span of uh, three to four months, uh, I became uh, very overloaded uh, with people reporting uh, issues. Uh, I'd actually take care of one and, and then three more would replace it the next day. Um, so I was kind of being overwhelmed by uh, the, uh, um, the, the popularity, the upswing of uh, my support. So, um, and then one day I actually had a revelation. And that revelation is that open source development is not the same thing as closed source development. And I thought I knew what this meant, um, but I really didn't uh, get it until that moment. And that kind of leads me to my first lesson, and that's don't do mentor. So instead of actually dropping everything and working on uh, the, the issues that were being reported, uh, I started responding, thank you very much uh, for reporting this issue. I'll definitely add this to my list of uh, to-dos, um, but uh, is there a chance you want to take a look at uh, uh, kind of solving this in the interim? And uh, usually within about a minute or two, they'd reply back and say, well, I'm really busy, or I can't do it. Um, and then wouldn't you know it, sometimes like as short as 15 minutes, I'd actually have a PR up. So uh, by, just by following this lesson, um, I saw my workload actually greatly decrease. Um, but I actually developed another problem, um, and that problem was basically people were submitting code uh, without tests. Uh, and I know what you're all thinking, what kind of subhuman would do that? <laughs> um, so I adopted what I like to call the gentle nudge. Um, and that's basically where I, instead of like uh, berating people for not including their tests, um, I would kind of flip the value proposition on its head and uh, I would uh, tell people, thank you very much for this contribution. Uh, is there a chance that you can write some tests so that I can make sure that this continues to work? And nine times out of 10, uh, people actually followed up uh, with a, a subsequent uh, push uh, containing the tests. <clears throat> Lesson three, uh, be responsive. Um, and this is actually something that uh, Wesley Bleary, uh, the gentleman who's the owner of the Fog Gym, uh, taught me. And if you notice in very successful open source communities, whenever you submit a PR or an issue, uh, you'll typically see a response within 24 hours. That response doesn't have to be like a solution. You don't necessarily have to review the code. You just have to let somebody know that, uh, that, that you acknowledged um, their issue or their pull request. Um, and I think this makes actually a huge difference. Um, like I said, if you, if you dig into certain open source communities, you'll notice that the people that are responsive um, will, will typically have a lot more community interaction. <clears throat> Lesson four, uh, be positive and emoji on. Um, uh, so uh, this kind of falls on the two tips that I showed uh, previously. Um, just be very positive. People that are contributing to open source are doing it uh, out of the, the kindness of their hearts. Um, and I think everybody here agrees that you want to be in a community uh, that, that really uh, supports and, and wants uh, what you're working on. Um, so I, I think that this really contributes to uh, kind of building a much bigger community. Um, and also, like, just throw in a lot of emojis. People love them. They're kind of like the scratch and stiff snicker of, uh, scratch and stiff, I can't say that word, uh, of, the, uh, of the internet uh, generation. <clears throat> Lesson five. Some people cannot be helped. Um, this, this was actually a very difficult lesson uh, for me. I've actually uh, worked at a couple companies that are very customer service based. 
um, and it's very difficult to say no. Um, and so I, I found that if you can't typically interact with somebody in a pull request or an issue report and get to the bottom, get some actual uh, information within like three responses, um, it's, you're better off just leaving that issue open and hoping that somebody else in the community will ha is having that same problem and are able to kind of jump in and provide you uh, that additional information. So lesson six uh, seems like a, a little bit kind of contrary uh, to the previous uh, lesson, uh, but the one thing that I noticed um, was that uh, if you're having trouble getting people to respond uh, to issues or pull requests, um, that uh, you're better off just actually kind of closing them. So if I asked uh, people for some follow-up information and I didn't get that within two weeks, uh, I would basically just close it with a, ni a nice note saying, um, I, it, I, it sounds like this issue has been resolved um, and you're no longer interested in it. And uh, I got a much, much better response from people uh, that way than actually just trying to kind of ping them. Uh, they would uh, jump in and say, no, no, please don't close this issue. Um, I, you know, I've been real busy. I've been meaning to work on it. Um, and then also to add to this, you'll see that uh, the uh, community uh, will actually chime in. Other people will say, no, please don't close this. Um, uh, this is a this is something that I'm watching. This is something that I need. <clears throat> Lesson seven: uh, You should always view issues as uh, opportunities. Um, I know it's really kind of hard whenever somebody s submits an issue or tells you that you have some bug in your code. Um, but uh, particularly in the open source world, um, this this is actually a good thing. Uh, people care enough about the work that you're doing uh, to, to report to you that, that something's not working. Um, it's also very good feedback. Um, maybe uh, your API is, is not as, as good as it could be. Uh, maybe there's some confusion around that. Maybe you need to add some additional documentation. Um, maybe you need to have some more examples. Uh, so please, please view uh, issues as, as opportunities as a good thing. Lesson eight, um, I think this is uh, uh, something that uh, everybody who's been on a Agile team will hear. Uh, it's not your code, it's our code. And I think this goes doubly, uh, is doubly true uh, for, uh, uh, for open source because if I submit something or I want to start a discussion about changing some software and you're not receptive to it, guess what? I'm going to fork your code. I'm going to take your ball and, and split, the, uh, split the community. Um, so uh, please, uh, as much as possible, try to kind of uh, come, come together. Lesson nine. Um, so uh, this, is, this is another one that kind of goes contrary to the last lesson uh, that I gave. I was actually very worried that somebody was going to submit uh, a pull request that was going to do uh, something drastically different uh, to one of my projects. And you know, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Um, and I kind of mentioned this to one of my coworkers, and I think she gave me the absolute best uh, answer that you can ever hear. Um, we are not quite ready for your awesome, and then just close the, close the pull request. I think that's the nicest way to shut the door you possibly can, uh, can do. And then lesson 10, uh, don't act entitled. Open source is a gift that you should be giving freely, and conversely, if you're a consumer of open source and something's not working, uh, it, you should really jump in uh, and try to help the community out and kind of develop that out. Um, so I want to leave you actually with one last thought from uh, one of my favorite presidents, uh, be on the road to awesome. Thanks.